really likes to hurt herself. And I don't know why. This Rachel, um, I think there's going to be 52 eggs. You think there'll be 52 eggs? How many do you think, Abby? I think three. Twelve. Twelve? Okay, let's go see. Um, that's what my baby thinks. Okay, who's going to open up the little door? I am. Next time it's going to be nice. All right, watch out. Back up, you two. We've done it for two days. Hi. <laughs> I just love watching them all fly out. It's great. I bet y'all are so excited to stretch your wings, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> All right, let's go see how many eggs there are. You said one or two. Yay, I tried. <laughs> All right, we'll need to give them food, but the food is back at the house. And we need to give them more water. That's right, chickens. You scratch up that compost pile for us. Once it gets tall enough and big enough, we're going to tarp it over so that the heat is really intensified. But then I shared yesterday that I'd tell more about our garden. So, <laughs> we've had some substantial problems with Johnson grass in the garden. And Johnson grass is the worst weed to have in your garden. You have a lot to say now, don't you? And he's like, not anymore. <laughs> So we discovered, I, I apologize for the rooster. He's, um, he's a little bit noisy. <laughs> but we were researching various options for the garden this year, because we are determined to stop the Johnson grass. That was the biggest threat to the garden last year. And I'm sure you all know about this big, huge pile of wood because we keep walking around it. But we're going to carefully select out the long boards like that one. And then we're going to, oh, we're going to use this wood to create raised garden beds behind the house. Now, the only problem with that is that the chickens really, really, really like to go over there and forage over there. But I happened to find a brilliant solution to such problems. And it was in the clearance aisle. So I got these, and before the tomato plants are producing tomatoes, I'm gonna hang these on the plants so that the chickens will come along and peck it and learn that there's not really food over there genius that's something i learned but this was 75 percent off so it was like a dollar um and i also got one with some mixed colors so that i can put it on other plants you know um but that's super exciting because i don't want our chickens to end up being the demise of our garden after fighting so much else last year and honestly, like I have all of this hope that I am exuding for you, which is accurate. I actually feel hope for the future, but also I'm filled with all this kind of fear because last year was so horrible. <sighs> I just need y'all to pull for me, okay? <laughs> because this next year, it, it just... We need it to be good. We really, really do. And I'm sure many of you get that. So <laughs> anyway. 
Okay, I just have to show you this. So it doesn't look like much now, but we're going to clear away all of that brush and we're going to put garden beds here and it's behind the house. Um, and then I'm actually going to put the garden beds so that they're right after these drainage pipes so that it's like a self-watering garden. Because that's one of the big problems with container gardens is that they dry out and they need more water. But I'm gonna have one bed for herbs and some wildflowers mixed in, a few tomato plants. So I thought, you know, this idea of doing the raised beds with the edible flowers and the herbs and maybe a few vegetable plants mixed in. I thought this was all my original idea turns out they've been doing gardens like this since the medieval times and it's called I practice this over and over again but it's called a potage garden also like if I were pronouncing it in English it would be like potager but I'll put <laughs> how you spell it here but it's potage <laughs> anyway so that's good in the respect that there's probably stuff that I can look up and how to do it even better but also I thought I came up with this all by myself. <laughs> and then there's the trampoline right there so I can be here weeding and whatnot while Abby is contentedly playing. And then there will be a bean teepee um, here as well so that the kids can go in there and play. And um, it'll just be super great. And I can't even express how excited I am. Um, and we're bringing some new plants. So... I would really like to make this here a walkway out to the big garden. Right now it's a fence with compost mixture there. But you see all of those weeds right in that garden? That is all Johnson grass. And for the past two years that we've had a garden there, We've plowed it, but it gets worse because when you plow um, Johnson grass, the, the root, which is called a rhizome, um, splits up and every little piece of the rhizome creates a new plant. So we're, we've just become inundated with it. It's horrible. And it grows super fast and it doesn't die easily. So we have a plan. We are not going to plow. We're going to try doing our own thing. But the first step is to move the pigs back there and we're gonna section it off in different sections because the pigs will root up those rhizomes and eat them. They, they love them. So that's the plan. The goats are not happy with me. The two goats that are not pregnant are in heat and Harmony, that one there, um, horned both of the kids yesterday. So they're being penned up with feed today until Arthur takes his nap and then we'll put them out to graze. But I need to be very, very careful. We, um, we really don't want aggressive animals on our homestead. We kind of need to wait and see if after she's through her heat cycle, if she calms down. But we're also talking about possibly selling her because we don't want to worry about aggressive goats anymore. Oh my word, no wonder they're so crazy hungry. They, they scratched up the floor so much, they just covered their feeder in straw. That is so funny. Look at their feeder. Do you think they want to eat straw? Yeah. No, they don't want to eat straw. Oh, and their water or two. Good thing I got a brick for that. All right, guys, that's not helping. There you go, little ones. Now let me fix your water. All right, there we go. Water, food. Oh, 
That seems to take all day. But these chickens are really helping us because they produce a lot of compost. So thank you guys. <laughs> They're starting to mix with the other chickens and it's getting really hard to tell them apart. Like, I don't know what is a meat bird and what is the egg laying chicken when they're out there. Um, so we're gonna have to figure something else out or close the gate at least so they can't get out as readily. I have to say, I miss the summer. I think in the summer we went through two whole bags of chicken feed, you know, except for the meat birds. Um, all summer long. But now that it's winter and the ground is frozen and the bugs have gone and whatnot. <sighs> but now we're going through a bag a week or so. It's sad. All right, so the goats are out to forage. Hopefully they'll stay in, but you know, they're goats and our fences aren't good. <sighs> But we have a plan, we have a plan. All right, let me share some more of our great things that are happening. Um, so we want the pigs to eventually come over and get all of those rhizomes out of the garden here. But we're going to move them section by section. Um, so we're going to move them over to where the wooded area is. And then the pigs are going to clear up by the fence since the goats just slip through. <laughs> and then we'll get them on top of the hill and then over to the garden. But we have time before we need to plant, so we'll be able to do all of that. Um, the only thing is we want Miss Piggy to be up there when she delivers. Um, or more specifically over there probably because there's all of that brush where her babies can hide from all the vultures that we've seen on our property. Um, because these are vultures that will kill live animals. Um, they're not the typical American vultures, but they're still protected. So <laughs> you do what you can. So since she's in heat and more aggressive than usual, we're putting her on a tie out just to make sure that the kids are safe. Um, we'll have to watch her and make sure that she's a safe animal to be around kids. Um, and this is just a gentle reminder, you know, for us, because no kids were hurt. But it's a gentle reminder that no animal can really be trusted. So, lesson learned. And we'll move forward with it, right? But we'll just know to watch her. Now, some of you might be saying, why don't we go ahead and breed her since she's in heat? But we've been very concerned about her weight and we only want to breed her once she's up to, well, a healthy weight. <laughs> so she's gonna have to be. So I have been trying all day to figure out a way to have this water not be all frozen solid when we come in the morning so it doesn't freeze overnight and I think I've got it. So I hoisted up this one leg. Um, it makes it so that it's not exactly secure, but if we do this overnight, it should be okay. And then it's still not overflowing and I have that overflow pan. And if I can get it a slow enough trickle, it should be perfect. So here's my plan. I'm going to pour this water in here just enough so it laps over the edge and then water flows in the direction of you know where it's flowing um, so it'll keep flowing out of here until they get up and they drink water and then it'll stop but by then by then it's morning and it shouldn't freeze too quickly i hope they're scratching up their ground in here it's kind of funny to watch <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give this a try. Okay. Well, that's as good as I can get it over here. Um, that's gonna freeze still, so that won't work. 
the issue is that there will be a morning that we won't be here coming up soon. So we've got to figure out how they can have water without us being here. Any chips? <laughs> I see why they're scratching up in here so much. That is their food on the floor. <laughs> well, no wonder. I can't wait for her to see what type this is. I'm so excited. Okay, Abigail. Mm -hmm. Are you excited to see what we got here? Yeah, what's your guess? Cucumbers. No, they're not cucumbers. It's right in here. <gasps> what is it? Um, I didn't read it. <laughs> what did he read? Abigail. 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 What is it? Tomatoes. Abigail tomatoes. Abby, mm -hmm. you're going to be eating your namesake. <laughs> are these my tomatoes? No, there are tomatoes. Okay. This is my seed organizing little box. Um... It's kind of full. We might need another option, but these are for Abby's garden. That's for a garden around the pool that's just flowers. And then these are herbs and edible flowers, plus other things that we're gonna plant over there, like kooka melon. Um, and then everything else will go in the big garden. Kind of crazy. I actually have a few seed packets to add to this. Here, I, I want... So whenever we walk out to the pigs, it's like the end of the day and it just feels so nice to be able to be like ah like that little bit of a deep breath saying it's coming to a close hi starving kittens kittens why am i saying kittens hi starving pigs your area is starting to dry out that's good I just love their little snouts looking everywhere. <laughs> it's so cute. They kind of remind me of little choir members. <laughs> He's like, I can run faster. And they're like, no, you can't. <laughs> The good news about them being here is that I could, if she would stop, I could really get a look at Miss Piggy and see if we are progressing like I think we are. Okay, Miss Piggy. I don't know. Kind of hard to say. I think we have to wait and see. That back one is certainly fuller than the rest. Oh, look on this side. This side you can definitely tell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that is progress being made right there. <sighs> so the next sign to look for would be on her back side. Um, it'll, that little thing will flip over <laughs> and it'll point up. We're not there yet, but I read that it's the weight of the pregnancy that does it, so. So we've just got to wait and see. Is she getting the lines too? Mm-hmm. I guess it's one of the last things. Yeah. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed our stroll around what the garden will be. And I hope that you will be pulling for us and encouraging us. And also, I really appreciate that you watched the whole video. And I really, really enjoy seeing so many people are enjoying our videos. So thank you for watching. And if you're not a subscriber, we would love to have you. But for right now, I think it's time to say goodnight to the chickens and goodnight to all of you. But thank you again for watching. and Have a good night.